What's up developers, it's Dari here from Code with Dari, and welcome back to a new video where we're going to set up Laravel on a Mac using the Laravel installer tool. We'll talk about what you need to install first, like PHP, Composer, Node.js, and the Laravel installer itself, and why each one of them is important. Right now, I'm on the official website of Laravel, and if I click on documentation in the top right corner, you will see that it brings me to the installation part. Here on the right side, you will see tons of different ways on how to install it. So if you use a different operating system or you prefer to use a different method, please do. Now, when we scroll down a little bit, you'll see that we first need to install PHP and the Laravel installer. Now, if we scroll down a little bit to the create a Laravel application section, we obviously need to start installing PHP because it's the main programming language that runs your application on the backend. On macOS, PHP is sometimes already installed, but it's often outdated. So let's make sure we have the right version. We're going to use our terminal quite a lot, and I love using a terminal named rep. It doesn't matter which terminal you use, this is just my personal preference. Just follow along if you do. If you run the PHP space dash V command, which stands for version, you might see something similar to this you'll notice that I'm running PHP 8.3.7. Now, if you don't see this, you need to install PHP. And there are tons of different ways on how you could do this. But personally, I prefer to use a tool called Homebrew, which I have already opened, which you can access through brew.sh. And Homebrew is a package manager for macOS. It helps you to easily install software and developer tools using the terminal. Think of it like the App Store, but for command line tools and utilities. Instead of going to the website, downloading zip files and manually setting things up, Homebrew lets you install things with one simple command. And it's pretty easy to install Homebrew too, since right here you will see a bin bash command that you can simply copy, navigate back to the terminal and paste it right here. Let's hit enter. All right, it's asking for my password, so let's add it. I don't mind if it's going to install additional stuff. So let's continue. This might take a moment. So I'm pausing the video for now and I will cut out the part where it's installing homebrew. Obviously, since I already have homebrew installed, it won't install it, but it will update homebrew. Now we have homebrew installed and through this installation, you get access to the brew command and I can make a complete separate video on homebrew, but for now, I simply want to install PHP through the brew install PHP command. All right, my PHP has been updated. So the next thing that we need to install is Composer. And Composer is a dependency manager for PHP. Without Composer, we'd have to manually download and organize every piece of code, which would be a nightmare. To check if you have Composer installed, you can run the same exact command as we did with the PHP command, then replacing PHP with composer. So let's say composer space dash V for version. And if you have it installed, you'll get something like composer version 2.88 is installed. You can install composer through homebrew as well by running the brew install composer command. Now we also need to install a tool that will build our front end, which we will do through Node.js. So let's say brew install node. And that's everything that you need for your Laravel application. So let's move on to the Laravel installer. The Laravel installer is a global tool that lets you create new Laravel projects with one simple command. Instead of manually creating folders, downloading Laravel and configuring everything yourself, the Laravel installer just does it all in one step. With the installation of Composer, we can run commands starting with Composer. We first need to add the keyword global right here. So we're telling Composer that we want to use it from anywhere in our system. So it will be always visible. We're going to require a package from the developers of Laravel forward slash installer. Let's hit enter and let's give it a moment. All right, now that we got the global installer installed, we can create our first Laravel project. But first we need to create a location where we want to store our projects. It's a great habit to store all your coding projects in one location on your computer. Now, 
I like to create a folder called workspace for my actual coding projects, which I share with clients and so on. And I like to create a second directory named tutorials, YouTube, whatever, where I store my YouTube or content projects. So everything stays clean and organized. So let's do that through the CLI as well, because I said we're gonna use it a lot. Now I'm already located in my desktop, as you could see right here, where I want to create a new directory, which we can do by saying mkdir, which stands for make me a new directory, followed with a directory name. So let's name it tutorials. Let's hit enter. Whoops, I already have it. I just deleted it and let's do it one more time. All right, now let's change directories into our tutorials directory by saying CD, so change directories into tutorials. Then in here, we can create our first Laravel application. This can be done by saying Laravel new, followed with the name of your project. So let's name it Laravel dash mastery. So what this does is basically downloading the Laravel framework, sets up a full file structure, and it will install all core dependencies using Composer. Now let's hit enter. All right. With the release of Laravel 12, Laravel added in a new set of starter kits. And starter kits are official packages that gives you the complete ready to use setup for your Laravel application. They handle essential features like user registration, login, password reset, and even front end scaffolding using Tailwind CSS, Blade, View, or React. So you basically don't need to install Laravel first, then Inertia, and then React. It all happens because of the starter kit. Now the starter kit that we would like to use is React. You'll see two authentication options. The first option is Laravel's own built-in authentication system. This is perfect for most apps. It includes everything you'd expect. So user registration, login, logout, password reset, and email verification. All powered by Laravel's native authentication features. The second option is WorkOS. And this one's a bit different. WorkOS isn't Laravel's own authentication system, but it's a third party service that lets you easily support enterprise login like SAML, Okta, Azure Active Directory, and even Google Workspace. But in our case, we're simply gonna stick to the default starter kit that Laravel has built for us. So let's hit enter. All right, it's gonna ask us which testing framework we would like to use. It doesn't really matter since it won't be part of this course. So let's click on pass PHP. All right, and give it a moment because it's installing our project and it's asking us if we would like to run npm install and npm run build. Let's also do that for now. This is actually something we will discuss and cover later on. All right, our project has been installed. Now let's change directories into our project by saying CD into Laravel mastery. And I actually want to wrap up this video and the final thing I would like to do is starting my project in the browser. With Laravel, we need to tell our application, hey, spin up a local web server so I can view and test my application in the browser. And this can be done by being inside your project. So you need to be located inside Laravel Mastery and run the PHP artisan serve command. Just follow along for now, since I do need to explain artisan and other stuff, but I will do that in a future video since you can make video series only on that. The only thing that you need to know right now is that this command uses PHP's built-in development server to run your application and it's meant for local development only, not for production or hosting real websites on the internet. Now, once you run this command, it usually responds with server running on this weird thing right here, which I will explain in a bit, and you can quit it by pressing Control C. Now let's go back to, well, this HTTP URL right here, and let's break it down. 127.0.0.1 means this computer. It's your local machine, so basically the one you're working on right now. The colon 800 right here is called the port, and a port is like a doorway into your system. Port 800 is just the specific door that PHP is using to serve your Laravel application. If another program is already using port 8000, Laravel might choose another one like 8001 or 8080. So this entire thing right here, so from HTTP, to the port 
means open my Laravel application running on my own computer using port 8000. All right, that was it for now. I want to wrap up this video where we have set up Laravel on our local machine using Laravel Global Installer. Make sure to subscribe, turn on the bell and follow along because we're going to go deep, but in a simple beginner friendly way. Thank you for watching this video. In the next video, we're going to have a look at the must know Laravel configurations and we're going to cover the direct restructure of the application that got installed.